guys around the world. Welcome back to another installment of the Guy Stuff Podcast. I am your host, Anthony Claiborne, joined as always by my man from the other side of the planet, John Espy. And tonight, uh, I say tonight, we're recording at night where I am. You, you know, when you, we've got these crazy time, time zones. What time is it over there, John? It is nine something in the morning. <laughs> nine something in the morning. It's like, I don't know, 10 something here at night. And our buddy Clinton Harris is with us today. And what time is it there, man, in Cali? 7.22 p.m. Time is, in fact, relative, friends. <laughs> All right. It is, it is trippy. It is, it is really trippy. I, you know, the podcast, one of the things is done, and we're just in it now, man. We're just talking now. Uh, <laughs> we're just like, we're just past all the, the stuff at the beginning. We're just talking. It's been very interesting, like, keeping up with all the time zones, right? So Because, you know, it's like, we're, we're back and forth. We're like, now, what time is it there? What time? Now, what time is it where he's at again? All these different people we're talking to, and, like, uh, we've uh, interviewed uh, a good buddy over in Melbourne, Australia, yeah, that was pretty trippy because they're like 14 hours <laughs> ahead of me. So he, literally, you know, every time I sit down with John, I'm talking to someone from the future. Yep. I'm, I've been there. I'm in the future. I'm, I'm like <laughs> Marty McFly. Just call me Marty. <laughs> Marty McFly. Um, and I will yeah. say, you know, that it's one of those things like, you know, we were just talking and Anthony is like 143 years old. So he's like, oh, it's 10 o'clock at night. Oh, I age well. So I cannot die unless you take my age. It's, it's, so, <laughs> it's so late. And we were up the other night. I was up to like 2.30 in the morning recording one of these jokers. And I was like, I was about to fall asleep. But I didn't say nothing. I'm fine. But and you do a lot of cocaine. I mean, <laughs> you got to have a little bump every now and then. You know, when you in Thailand. A little, a little, a little, a little, a little bump. <laughs> oh, when in Thailand, do as That's the right. That's right. Well, John did tell me one day that he, he bought some um, tobacco from a local farmer. I didn't buy it from a local farmer. I bought it from a little store that was next to a farm that was <laughs> its own. That had, like, this I heard you say a local tobacco. farmer. I it was. Just, it was a bag of just. It never mind. It's fine. And he was Maybe. like in a bathroom and opened his little jacket. And you could do that in California too. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go out. No, it was. It was like really. They have really like I didn't realize that they have really cheap tobacco in Thailand. That maybe mixed with hay and everything else, but it's like you get a bag like this big for like hey. twenty baht. He's got hey. cabbage in there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was all right. It would taste bad for twenty. I've seen that movie. I've seen that movie. <laughs> yeah, it did not end well. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my man. gosh. Well, so go ahead, John. I was, gonna, I was just going to introduce our, bro our, our our brother Clinton Harris here. Um, Enlighten people. Yes, he is <laughs> a a a Renaissance man, a man of many talents. He is a uh, <laughs> Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt. Um, he rolls out at, at, um, um, Hollywood Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right? That's for you. That's yeah. for home I mean, I, I jump around like four or five different places. Yeah. So he's a, he's a, 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 a gym nomad just kind of roams <laughs> around. Um, a mat surfer. Mat surfing. Yeah. He's, he's, mat he's surfing. there you go. Um, but, um, <laughs> and then I saw I just looked down and somebody changed Clinton uh, Clinton's name on there and it just messed me up. Um, <laughs> so um, Clinton's also he's an actor out there. So that's why he lives out in Cali uh, to get his acting career on and, and, and has been in some things. We'll find out a little more about that. And also one of the uh, key things that we're really interested in talking. Well, two things we're really interested in talking to Clinton about. Uh, one is uh, he did a thing called the Rollathon. Uh, here uh, last year, set the world record for the most uh, roles in twenty when a twenty four hour period. So yeah. that's cool. We got to talk about that, and we like to get on the fringes, the edges of cons <laughs> conspiracy things. We like, to, we like to talk about that. We're gonna look at that and see um, from different angles how many people Clinton has killed. Not not Clinton Harris, the Clintons. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, we're gonna talk about how many the, the Clintons have killed. So yeah. we're gonna we're gonna go we're off in that a little bit. <laughs> and he rolls on the reg with one of my favorite BJJ artists, Kit Dell. Now, if you're watching this online, I'll, I'm going to hold up a picture here. All right, I want you to look at Kit Dell next to John. 
All right, I'm telling you. Hey, there you go. <laughs> He looks more Australian than you do. He does look more Australian. <laughs> Nick, uh, Clinton, thanks for coming and hanging out with us. And that is, um, uh, it's kind of funny when you think about it in an ironical kind of way uh, that your name's Clinton and you like to dive into things <laughs> that maybe the Clintons have done. I don't know. Let me preface. <laughs> I'm grateful to be here. Thank you guys for the uh, invitation. <laughs> And uh, I'm named after Clint Eastwood, okay? All right. Ah, there we go. Gotcha. All right. Not, not Bill. Very not Bill. Good. Get my alpha male card back real quick. Exactly. Yes, exactly. absolutely. My non assassin there, there card. Is, <laughs> there, there is none other, no one like Clint Eastwood. Except none. for Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Except for Clint Eastwood. <laughs> I, I didn't like I, I like some of Clint Eastwood stuff, like his his movies and stuff that he did, you know, back then. Mm -hmm. Everybody loved the Clint Eastwood westerns, spaghetti westerns and stuff. Yeah. Um, and even his new stuff was good. But like, man, his his directing movies, man, he that Joker is an amazing yeah. director. Like he just yeah. like, just can throw it yeah. down directing. Man. I didn't I didn't really care for the was it the mule? I didn't think I didn't was, see that one yet. It's not uh, not one of his best. Really? In my opinion. I I'm see not that seeing that one either. Yeah. Um I mean it's growing. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you first, Clint. You first. I was just gonna say it's worth. I think it's worth watching, but I mm. definitely don't know if it adds value in comparison to a lot of the other films that he's done. Mm. Um, kind of, I don't know. It could have been a little bit better, but but yeah. I think it's still worth watching because it's a good storyline, at least. Yeah. Yeah. I have to check it out. I have. I don't even know what, what's it about. What's the plot on it? So so basically, he gets uh he gets into some hot water and he gets. I think he's in hot water and or just bored with life. <laughs> And so he just starts shuttling uh, drugs across the Mexican border and into Texas, I think. Um, hence the mule. He's, he's the mule. He is. And uh, it, it, go, it keeps going. You know, it keeps going. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I think that's pretty good. <laughs> Check it out. Maybe like a seven, right? Six and a half. Okay. Right? <laughs> <laughs> going did, back yeah. to another conversation we were talking about earlier. <laughs> One to ten, six and a half, not exactly. seven. <laughs> it's, it is it is the Hillary Swank of of, uh, hey, of hey, million dollar baby. Yeah, there you go. wait, that's not Hillary Swank. Yeah, that's Hillary Swank. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, is yeah, it? yeah. Okay. That's Swank. yeah. There you go. See, look it at is. it. It is. It is. Well, I grew up on like my hometown. Every Saturday, we had this dude who would come on and they had like these furniture infomercials basically. And they would show Clint Eastwood movies. Oh yeah. And like in the commercials, he would, I'm Casey and, I'm, and he would talk about his couches and sofas and, and chairs and all that. But like, that's, <laughs> that was my first introduction to Clint Eastwood. Like mm -hmm. high plains drifter. Oh yeah. Pale rider. Pale yeah. rider. Oh yep. my goodness! That's just that's, that's <laughs> like stuff, man. that's like quality manly stuff, man. I tell uh, you, yeah. my my favorite Clint Eastwood movie is Any Which Way But Loose with the orangutan. <laughs> yeah, that is great. Right, <laughs> right turn, <laughs> Clyde. That's right good turn, stuff, Clyde. right there, man. I, I think you know one of the most latest films. I think it, I mean it was not, not late, super late, but I mean I don't know if it was like eight years, maybe. Grand Torino. He did. The, oh yeah, the remake. that was a one. Uh, was a man, I was, was like. Really good. Yeah, come on to my lawn as well, boy. <laughs> no. Yes. Yeah. That was a great really, movie. As an actor, I really want to work with him before, mm. before I can't. Yeah. yeah. Hey, so that, Clint, that, Joker, that Joker old as dirt, man. He's almost like old. 90, as, I think he's like 93. Yeah, he's trying to catch up with Anthony. So is he there. seriously 93? I think he's, I think he's 93. Ooh, pretty, holy smokes. We fact, 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 fact check that fact check that there anthony let's see, let's see. i think i think he's doing it i hear oh i, I hear clicking somebody he's, clicking yeah, yeah 19 1930 so Holy 90 smokes. 1930 that that makes it 90 yeah 90 years old wow, wow. so impressive the things he's accomplished guys that's how you live your life right there mm. yeah and, and clint if you are listening to our friend clint if you're listening to him, uh, there's still time to cast him in one of your movies. Exactly. <laughs> and we know that you are at least quasi-conservative based on some things you've said and done. Oh, yeah, so, absolutely. So, so I think you two would get along great, Clint. There you go. And, uh, John and I could come to set and we could do a live from set. There you go. There you go. It could be that's a good, good. thing. It yeah, man. Good thing. But, see, that's the thing is like we were had a, we had a guy named uh, – a director named George Johnson on um, – 
back. I don't know, a couple episodes back. Um, it all runs together. It all runs together now. But great guy. I love George to death. Um, super sweet guy. But we made him promise that because they're filming a movie now called Pull from Darkness. Um, and so we made him promise that uh, we can go on the set and then do a live like interview feed with the cast. And he's like, yes, you can do it. You can do it. Yes, I'd love for you to do that. So we're going to be doing one of them from uh, the set of Pull from Darkness, Lord willing, if we can, if I can get my butt on a flight and get over there. So well, where's he filming it at? And what's it uh, up in? It's, go ahead, Anthony. I was going to say it's up in Indiana uh, yeah. for, for me up in Indiana. And it is the true story of a of an Armenian mobster's wife. This cat lost her in a game of cards. Whoa! And she ended up in Traffic, being yeah. sex trafficked. Mm -hmm. And wow. it's about her story of escape from that life. Yeah. And so, which I so George uh, is doing some really cool things. Um, George, if you're listening, uh, Clint, you need to talk to Clint. Clint would be your guy. I'd be honored uh, just be some, some cool stuff for you. But, I'd be honored just for a cameo. I'd be like, do that. Just <laughs> face. Yeah, that's, that's, it. that's just it. a face cameo. Just like three seconds of just. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's doing some neat stuff. You know, he's pushing yeah. pushing the envelope and, and trying to tell yeah. some solid stories that are still Christian based, but they're yeah. real. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, everybody, every every story does not end happily. Mm. You know, I mean, I think one of the things that happens so often in Christian movies is like you can always like plot it out. It's like yeah, there's sort of the Christian version of Hallmark, where yeah. in, in a Hallmark movie, you know, that last ten minutes there's going to be that build up and that that issue, and then she finally does decide she wants to move from the city back home and marry the country boy, and uh, up until back on now, a ranch. <laughs> exactly. Up until now, Christian movies have always been, yeah. you know, the last ten minutes there's that big crisis, and then. The person comes to Christ. Well, that doesn't always happen. Right. It doesn't. I mean, it'd be great if it did, but that's not reality. And George is kind of sharing some of the stories that you know, yeah. like his movie "That Neighbor" is uh, not a movie you show the youth group. Uh, it's it's yeah. really good. You know, it's, it's it's good stuff though. So, anyway, George, if you're listening, you should talk to Clint. Yeah, um, I'd be. I mean, I'd be honored just to you know, even for a table read or like just yeah. to read with like to be countered for a reader. That'd be kind of cool. I, I think it's cool, man. There's this guy. I think his name is Anthony Sobato Jr. Yeah, I saw you, this. I was going to yeah. ask you. Okay, you saw that. Yeah. yeah. On Twitter, he went hard, bro. He's going hard. And I love that. What I don't know. I, I think he's a Christian as well. Yeah. Um, I, like I just see some of the stuff that he says against Hollywood. Like, he's yeah. like tired of being um, like demoralized or diminished because of having conservative values or Christian values or both. Yeah. And uh, they called it conservative studios and they're launching yeah. in the next like three weeks, I think officially that's launching. Awesome. That's Dude, it's awesome. so cool. That's so cool. Cause that is cool. When, when you, I don't, I don't know how much you guys know about like the process of going to acting classes and the process of going to auditions, man, there's some really strange things that you hear and see or really? hear of. And it's like, so what? like, like what, what's the strangest Stranger thing? Than this? <laughs> what's the yeah. what's the strangest thing somebody has like i mean to be like look i'm not of. so whoever watches this whoever listens to this i am not a seasoned expert in this industry however no looking at what i think i know mm -hmm. there's a lot more shady stuff that happens in this business than people realize um and you got to try you got to really think critically mm -hmm. you got a lot of people are sold on the, the quickness right like yeah. Oh well, if you do this, if you do this, yeah. you can get into this, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Or yeah. like sexual favors are actually mm. a thing; they're right. actually a real thing. So the casting um, couch is real, huh? Straight up, yeah, real. So do I not mean, go in there with luminol and black light to the casting couch. That's what. I'm <laughs> to say. No. Yeah, I mean, but people are so caught up in like wanting mm. to like make it that. Oh yeah, I'll sacrifice a little bit of this and that. Yeah, and then next, you know. You're about someone selling their soul to the devil to <laughs> what, be like a star. That's something like, like you know, it, it's almost cliche and it's almost, you know, you know, just as a like cartoonish in the selling soul yeah. devil. But man, that like, <clears throat> if you yeah, do some yeah. research into some like yeah. some of these people who have who've made it big and, and they'll, some of them have straight up said, yeah, I did yeah. that. I sold my, you know, I'm like, yeah. And, and yeah. people just kind of go, ah, ha, 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 yeah, you, you know, you sold to the industry kind of thing. No, no, to actual Satan. And he's like, <laughs> no, 
I showed it to Lucifer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, and, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it is kind of cliche. And I think it's a cliche to make us desensitized yeah. to oh, no that doubt. actually being a thing. And I think a lot of people don't realize, like, uh, one of my things is I've made some poor decisions, like any human being. Um, and I want to continue to be like Christ. I want to continue to, to, to be what we're called to be as, as people of Christ, you know, on this planet. And, um, man, yeah, dude, it's, it's pretty wild. Like, you know, you see something, you hear something, you like a video of a celebrity or, or whatever. And you're like, Oh, it isn't, that doesn't, that's weird, but whatever. Then you, when you see the people make like montage videos, mm. right. Or a, a, a combination of like 15 celebrities yeah. or whatever. I'm giving just an example. Yeah. And you're like, whoa, dude, musicians. Yeah. Yeah, musicians yeah. are way more yeah. open about it, though, yeah. than actors, yeah. just actors. I but, tell you, the, the one that shocked me was so bad, was so hard, was when I saw, uh, it was what, 60 Minutes was with, with Bob Dylan a few years back. And mm-hmm. he was, they were, they were like, you know, why are you still, um, you know, why are you still touring? You're, you know, 60 something, 70 something. He's like, I, I, gotta, I made a deal with, with uh, the man. And, and so I have to, you know, can hold up mine in the bargain. He's like, what do you mean? And he's like, you know, the power that runs this world that in like basically Satan, yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I gotta, I gotta hold my end of the deal up. And I was like, why do you still do it? Why are you still out here? Well, it goes back to the destiny thing. You know, I made a bargain with it, you know, a long time ago and I'm holding up my end. What was your bargain? To get where, um, I am now. Should I ask who you made the bargain with? <laughs> with, 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 you know, with the chief, uh, chief commander on this earth, <laughs> and on this earth, and then, uh, and then in the world we can't see. Could he have at least given him a decent voice in that deal? Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he got screwed. Yeah, I mean, I mean, so, so if, if, if he wanted thought. money, he got money. But so, so here's a thought. Uh, if 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 Bob Dylan uh, sold his soul to Satan to to become you know Bob Dylan, um, and his voice is horrific and sucks, um, what about people who think his his voice is great? Does that mean they're not saved? Does that mean they they lost? Oh, it's because is Satan making people hear hear like maybe to a lost person, Bob Dylan's voice sounds like an angel singing. Maybe yeah, that's interesting. That's an interesting it's very thing. interesting. You know, although if you ever watch this video of Must Be Santa, it will change your life. <laughs> hey, you know what? Do you guys? Here's a here's a kind of off the wall question. What what are your thoughts biblically? If I'm not mistaken, mm-hmm. the flood yeah. was designed to wipe out the Nephilim as well. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yeah. Now, anywhere in the Bible, I'm not. You guys are probably far more scholarly than I am. Um, I mean, definitely. <laughs> um, is, did that like was that definitive or is there some way to to think on if they still roam <laughs> okay here you go so i'm glad you asked this question because actually in september we're gonna have i'm gonna i'm gonna we're breaking it on the podcast right now we're gonna, the plug, first one we're gonna plug, plug an episode yeah we're plug an episode we have a, a gentleman uh a bible scholar uh, by the name of dr michael heiser who mm. is like one of the top scholars in the world uh, and also is a sci-fi and paranormal geek. Like he just, but he does it from <laughs> a scholarly, scholarly thing. But anyway, he has yeah. a book called Unseen Realm, and it's it's a scholarly edition, uh, like with tons of footnotes, tons of you know um, ancient Semitic languages and mess. It's freaking nuts. Um, but he goes into um, what the Nephilim was and mm-hmm. the the trace elements of the Raphaim that 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 after the flood that basically what um david and joshua joshua and david had to basically um kill like the remnants to kill out like the to, to kill that bloodline off uh completely because mm-hmm. there was and so one of his a couple of his theories one if i'm i'm probably misquoting him completely but from my understanding one of his a couple of his theories is um either a um there was some bloodlines that were that were traced that 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 weren't that were brought through um through um noah's family that mm. that led in uh to after the flood or that the the fall 
the fall of the angels, the watchers and those kind of things continued yeah, after the flood. And there were, there were more bloodlines created. Uh, and uh, so, um, and so I'm like, I said, I'm probably butchering it completely, but, um, the, so there's a couple good. options. And so, um, yeah. that, that, so if you, if you look at, if you look at Goliath and his five brothers, there's a reason yeah. why that's interesting about the five brothers is because, um, there, if you, if you somehow he, you trace it back through the actual biblical and, and, and Semitic, um, texts, um, and look at it and see like, uh, Dave, uh, Goliath and his five brothers were, uh, descendants of the Raphaim, yeah. which was the, the, the sins of the Nephilim, whatever. Um, and so that's why it was so imp really important that these five brothers, uh, were killed as well and to end that bloodline. And mm. so that was like the helping to reestablish Israel in the land and, and, and reconquer what, uh, the watchers had, had screwed up. So, I think it's really interesting. I mean, that, that kind of is, I'm, I'm in line with that. I, d I definitely think either or, I mean, yeah. right. Cause a lot of, a lot of the, the tyranny essentially in the mm. land predating the flood, yeah. a lot of it still exists today. And no, it's yeah. only changed forms. I mean, that's yeah, all, exactly. that's all the enemy's done. I mean, yeah. uh, he, he, he's never stopped operating. Yeah. And, you know, if you look at uh, ancient cultures, yeah. Um, they all had the same kind of little G gods. Yeah. yeah. Every one of them, they had the exact same types, uh, even in, uh, you know, the, the Middle East, you know, we've got, you know, Baal. Well, mm. you can go over to the Celtic Isles. They have the same little G God spelled yeah. the exact same way. Mm. Yeah. Coincidence. Mm, I don't believe in coincidences. Yeah. I mean, like what ancient Egypt Ancient Sumer, ancient China, ancient Mayans and Aztecs and, and natives, they all talked about seeing beings come down from the sky. In my mind, it makes sense that those are the fallen angels. The Anunnaki or the Gregorian race yeah. came down to seed with man. Yeah. And I had a conversation the other day about this. Someone asked me, he's like, well, what do you think about like Greek mythology and this mythology? Why does Christianity? And I'm like, well, you know, <clears throat> this is just is one piece of thing that I just threw yeah. at him. I'm like, you know, it's cool. So it came to a revelation of sorts that all these other ancient civilizations believed in these, these gods, right? Gods that mm. came down from the sky, all of them, mm. all of them depict it. And, but they actually had sex with women of man and created offspring, mm. all of yeah. them yeah. with, with God, with the Christian mm. God, big G, he didn't have actual sex. Virgin mm. Mary gave birth yeah. to, to Christ. And no one, no one, no one in any other ancient mythology ever claimed to be the savior of man or, or the son of God. No one really ever claimed that, which is, I think it's amazing. I think it's like a big, cause all that predates, um, it's all B BC, all that's yeah. BC, right? Um, all those civilizations and God comes in, he's like, you know what? I'm going to show you <laughs> bring the son of man. And, uh, I, I, I think it's beautiful, man. I think it's amazing. <laughs> that's one of the things if you look at um with the the like the with the uh the nephilim and stuff like that the the sons of man are the sons of god coming down and having and intercoabitating with with women and creating the nephilim yeah. the, and it literally says in the text is like there were men the men of great renown like there's so these restored like there's stories yeah. that were everybody knew uh, and like if you look at look at greek mythology the story of hercules you have yeah. these you know this offspring of the god uh, uh, of the gods. Yeah. And so there's this, there's this connection with, um, with this, you know, even like said ancient, uh, Sumerian, ancient uh, Mesopotamian texts, uh, have like a lot of the same things going through there, the bell yeah. cycle, all these things are going through there. Mm -hmm. But what you have in the old Testament, you see God going, you, you guys say that, like they said, the Anunnaki, do you say these are, we're, we're good things. These are something that, that brought in, um, good things to you and all these things that like all your technology and your, and your civilization and all this stuff, uh, you know, uh, is, is a good thing. And this is where you're kind of deriving your, your, your origin from. But then, then the bi biblical text is saying, no, let me tell you actually what happened. They actually are bad. They're actually yeah. the ones that are, are against the creator of, of, of the universe. And they're actually causing you to worship them instead of the creation. So mm -hmm. our of the creator, and so it's a, it's a really interesting connection. If you, if you look at it from a truly biblical worldview, looking at, yeah. looking at those things, you go, man, you, you can't take the supernatural out of Christianity. If you do, you don't, yeah. you're just left with a, for the philosophical system that, mm -hmm. um, that is missing a whole huge piece 
of, uh, of what and, and the Bible are. has the answers. I really believe that. You know, I think that you know God gave us. Uh, he didn't. He gave us what we needed in His Word to understand these things. Now, we always have to walk that fine line. You know, there's there's that fine line of balance of uh, you know studying these things, being aware of these things, but yet still love the Lord your God with all your heart and love. Mm, yeah. Yeah. You know, your neighbors, yourself, you know, we, we got to walk that fine line. Cause a lot of, a lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll get so wrapped up in that. Meanwhile, like their neighbors, like literally dying and going to hell yeah. and, and they, you know, they know everything about all these things, but they've never walked across the yard. And we have to, yeah. we have to like find that balance. Uh, mm-hmm. But I mean, the answers are there and the, the enemy uh, is really sleek. He's, he's, yeah. he's really smart. And he's, he's always been good at uh, giving a counterfeit to what God was presenting. And, you know, you, you talk about like the technology and stuff. I mean, you know, the goal to, to hasten our destruction, basically. Mm-hmm. I mean, so, so much of what we have, I mean, we think we're so advanced. I don't even think we're like <laughs> as advanced. Personally, personally, I don't think we're as advanced as the antediluvian world was. I mean, yeah. somebody might think crazy for saying that, but I, I, I think well, that we're not even remotely as advanced as they were. I think, I think it's really interesting. I mean, <clears throat> like I, I've dove down the rabbit hole quite a bit, yeah, and, uh, and it's interesting, like seeing engineers. We live in LA, so I live I mean, in LA. You know. Yeah, I have to. Either either I go out and do these crazy things or I just do my own thing and just like, <laughs> oh. but, um, you know, I think it's interesting, man, like, is looking at engineers, modern engineers, and they look at the ancient civilizations, like the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Egyptians, like, we can't barely do this today. Yeah. You know, and that's a really interesting concept. I mean, John, you had mentioned, um, you had mentioned that uh, it's really tricky, you know, that they, they come down because they want the worship. Mm, yeah. And so, and then we have Discovery Channel or whoever, these engineers saying, this cannot be done barely today, like with mm. the technology we have. So people are like, oh my gosh, these, it's, it's more than myth. <laughs> and yeah. then they completely dissuaded from even greater things, even, you know, their creator. Yeah. Man, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, and you know, it is tricky because like, you know, I start to think and I dive and I, like, I just posted an Instagram thing and, um, <clears throat> It's really cool because I have people that are so wrapped up in the emotional um, thinking and we're well, not really thinking, but the emotional thing of, of everything right now, everyone's so wrapped up and, and uh, with, with hate and disdain and, and, and all this malice and stuff. And I'm like posting stuff on my Instagram story and people are like, Oh dude, I didn't know about that. And then it opens up that door and it, yeah. it's, you know, people know I'm a Christian, <clears throat> but I'm talking about like stuff that <laughs> has been plotted yeah against the people we the people for a long time and uh it's it's pretty interesting you know um but i dive down into that stuff and i start to become kind of bitter mm. you know i start to become i don't know I, in my mind i'm hope i'm hoping it's righteous anger but also it's also bitterness that there's so many people that just don't see that like the wool is still here yeah you know yeah. so but it's you know just piggybacking on what you had said yeah, uh, yeah. Anthony. Well, that's, that's why it says narrow is the way yeah you know narrow is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction yeah and that's the thing too if you look at <clears throat> some of the things that's, i've looked at a couple of things that you posted um like <laughs> uh, uh event 201 and, right? and we still had you yeah exactly it was really good i'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> i like conspiracy stuff um but yeah. this is like this this is not like the event 201 was not a conspiracy like this is this no. This is the Bill Gates Foundation did a simulation of a worldwide pandemic using the coronavirus specifically. Yeah. Specifically, yeah, like it wasn't like, and they they and and they did they did release a public on their website. Yeah. They released a public statement saying this the the coronavirus that we use is not the coronavirus. You're like going, hmm. what? <laughs> like yeah. that's they, they they couldn't get away from them actually not doing it, but they just mm-hmm. had to try to spin it to somewhere like. <laughs> This is in, this is really really weird, and uh, he can't people, even keep viruses off his computers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but event two hundred one, no, seriously, I mean, it happened in October, and all these big upper echelon government leaders, like Bill Gates, obviously, put it on. Uh, uh, Johnson and Johnson was a part of it, um, 
and a bunch of government leaders across the world were all invited. Mm -hmm. But guess who wasn't invited? Trump. Trump. <laughs> yeah. And this is a three hour, three and a half hour filmed. They filmed all of one well, that. Yeah, it was five. Yeah, I think there are three and a half hours. It's listed as a three and a half hour event, mm -hmm. but um, there are five on they're filmed and they're still on youtube right now so anyone watching this really they could literally go watch it is exactly what we've seen play out in the media and in the in, in public health across the country and across the world wow. so i mean it's right there on the john hopkins website john hopkins if, yeah if anybody's curious yeah. it's just right there i, I mean you know, and the propaganda, like saying, oh, you're saying it was this, so that means you're that way. It's us versus them, like the whole, like, if you think it was planned, you're just a conspiracy nut. Yeah. Okay, it's on their website. Like, yeah, that's <laughs> the thing. That's the thing is, too, is like going, when people go, oh, you conspiracy. I was like, we live in an age now where we have as much information as anybody else in the entire access to information more than anybody else in the entire human history had. Yeah. And, and to look and just go, Look at our own government. Like it has been so good for us. Yeah, it's really, it's wonderful. You know, um, and and so <laughs> we look at we we get all the 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 vast you know majority of information from all of human history at our fingertips, and we look at like yeah. cats and and chicks and Instagram and, and stuff. That's what. <laughs> that's what. We're anyway, that's um, yes, I need a new speedo. Exactly. Yes. Like, um. So the um. But the thing Clearly. is, is like if you uh. look at this, what we've done, like and admitted to like what was it in, in guatemala we released like syphilis into a, yeah. a whole country just to see what would happen like yeah. and that's not conspiracy that's literally yeah. like uh hillary clinton came out and was apologizing for it what five six years ago seven years ago something yeah. like that um like oh we did this you know there's all these things that are just that are out there that are just yeah we did that yeah we did this yeah we did mk ultra yeah. which was MK like ultra, yeah. was a conspiracy like you know like uh, a conspiracy nuts freaking you know amazing Go fantasy yeah. exactly uh, i mean yeah. you know i was about to do a video i was working on but it's just so much i'm trying to put out in one video one small yeah. video but it's just a lot to talk about is like the, the chain of events like when you start to think about the new world order yeah right because that's president after president on the record talking about New World Order. Mm -hmm. We have it on the dollar bill. Yeah. We have it in many, many rap uh, yeah. songs, and we have it in movie after movie after movie. If people understand, like, what Operation Paperclip was. Yeah. Oh yeah. We talked about Nazis. Day. Yeah. The funding of the funding. IBM was a big fund uh, yeah. uh, donor for World War II on behalf of the Nazi regime. Uh, paperclip over yep. 1500 Nazis were recruited over to work in various facilities and faculties Thank and, you, NASA, and, and formed NASA Thank you. <laughs> and formed NASA yeah. and and uh put and us on the moon. Yeah. it put us yeah put us on the moon. right <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, MK Ultra what yeah. was used they used it to torture uh Jews and others mm -hmm. um you know and then Operation Mockingbird was was a leveraged to by the cia mm -hmm. which yeah. so, so oss was the cia right yeah they recruited nazis and they later became the cia they reformed mm -hmm. under the cia and then they used operation mockingbird mm -hmm. to infiltrate hollywood and own yeah. Holly, own hollywood mm -hmm. yeah. hollywood is an extension of the cia yeah. <laughs> what, uh, operation yeah. mockingbird there, there was a, a a film that came out uh out was yeah. it called um out of shadows out of shadows that and they out talked about that and like that's literally yeah. like you can yeah. go look it up like it's no there. no that's true an official television report to the nation from the United States Army. It was an OSS memo, the precursor of the CIA, where they were doing a study of the use of motion pictures in America as a means of psychological warfare. So it goes all the way back to pre-1947 when U.S. intelligence was, uh, was using motion pictures uh, to alter the thinking of Americans in the United States. Yeah, the thing is, Out of Shadows, this is crazy, because Out of Shadows came out in, like, uh, March, and yeah. I watched it the second day it was out. And yeah. I was like, oh, man, that makes sense. Now, obviously, I'm still going to hold on to some skepticism, and I'm going to yeah, do yeah. my own research, but it was like, whoa, this is, this is, this is a, so it's a soft disclosure. It's, it's exactly, hard yeah. information, but then when you go further down the rabbit yeah. hole, you, like, it's gut-wrenching. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, they talked about Operation Mockingbird, yeah. and... Uh, it's like all the movies we see, 
Yeah. You know, there's, I don't know, man. It, it, it's, it's programming. Yeah, it's programming. Predictive programming, mm-hmm. it's uh, desensitiz- desensitization. So when you say, oh, this is this, this is that, and like people are like, oh, no, that's, that was in a movie. Yeah. It can never be real. It was in a movie. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, that's the thing, like, and I'm, I'm kind of, <clears throat> I, I, I like to go off on the UFO kind of stuff sometimes. I don't get too deep off I of think it. John I John got here. In a UFO. I, think I, <laughs> I was just <laughs> I was just implanted here I don't know I don't know where I come from um, Thanks, man. but I, I don't go too deep off into it because I think it does lead to a lot of uh, demonic influence stuff but yeah. um but like I think like a lot of like the the for for years and years the Hollywood um, system has been kind of portraying that as normal 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 or conspiratorial or whatever um, yeah. I think that it's it's I think the UFO phenomenon is a demonic thing. That's kind of where I, 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 I hitch my wagon to. Um, yeah. But I think that um, them doing that, like desensitizing people to it for when something actually comes out and, uh, yeah. and kind of is revealed, then people are like, oh, this is the answer we've been looking for to where we come from. This is, yeah. it, and I, I yeah. guarantee you, as soon as, if that does happen, let's say it does happen, mm-hmm. and I'm not just crazy nut. Um, the first thing they're talking about is, oh, yes, this redefines, uh, God, there's no God, there's, you know, this is who we're, you know, there's, there's yeah. going to be that, that's going to be the thing that's going to try to do. They're going to be like, oh, we're the ones that created you. So basically worship us kind of thing. So, are you, are you all familiar with project Bluebeam? No. I, ha- I, I got to so. send, send me a link. <laughs> send me a link, so, Clinton. So, pro- so project Bluebeam is exactly that. It's a governmental operations, uh, where they project ufo or alien tech or even a human being they can project and it looks like legitimate real like all really? the way so so basically they could i mean honestly it it could happen in october yeah. or november it could definitely yeah. in my opinion that'd be the best time for them to do it if they whoever they yeah. are wanted to scare us into submission yeah uh, you know, I live it. in the south, everybody would just grab their guns. No, the thing about it, which is kind of interesting though, is like if you just saw like a massive spaceship, right, hmm. or what would be classified as a UFO or whatever, and you're not seeing it actually destroy anything, it's probably definitely not real. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's, just a, it's a hologram that yeah. looks really, really real. Yeah. So I think it's going to be used. It's not even a conspiracy. Like people can go look it up themselves. I mean, yeah. the type of technology that we have is in my opinion, probably a hundred percent more uh, wild than people could realize. Like, oh, yeah. so, well, yeah. the, the, yeah. the average public, I, I will tell you years ago, I, I taught and coached at a school just outside of Washington, DC and my goalkeeper for my soccer team, for my high school soccer team, his dad was a legit rocket scientist at the Pentagon. Mm. And he told me one day, we were just chatting, and he said, he said exactly what you just said. He said, people have no idea the stuff we have at our disposal. Yeah. He just told me, they just said they have no idea. It, it, it's um, like, you know, we, I mean, this is like, we have microwave weapons. Mm. like legitimate like star wars type microwave weapons we have we have uh sound tech weapons and they're mounted they're mounted while while the coronavirus started picking up they're mounted on certain a certain number of uh military vehicles um at the top so it basically looks like a dish right Mm. like a dish like cable tv or whatever Mm. and you just point it at a crowd and turn it on and you can crank it up and fry someone's brain or turn it on one and make them run away (laughs) um it's real though. It's real, yeah. you know, and it just yeah. out of all the things that I've seen unfold, you know, cause I've been watching this thing since day one, my buddy, mm-hmm. also a veteran. Um, he, he told me about coronavirus in January and we started talking about it. And, and it's like a couple of days before Trump closed off China. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, I started planning and I started watching every single briefing. I was like diving into information cause I lost my job almost immediately. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and so I just started diving, man. And I'm like, you know what? This is, this, when people really put things together, this makes me believe in God more because yeah. it makes me want to believe less in the government. Yeah. And it makes me understand that people literally worship science yeah. and worship medicine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, it just became way more affirming 
yeah. that my faith needs to be in God and, and that's in God, logical, critical yeah. thinking, but God, you know, yeah. and that's something if you look at like when the coronavirus happened, this is something I was telling my wife, um, you know, yeah. even, I even felt like there was like, there's this, I think it was a spiritual thing attached to it. Um, mm-hmm. was a spirit of fear. Like everybody was freaking out. Like yeah. everybody, it was just yeah. like fear, 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 fear. And like the whole, like as a whole, as a whole, everybody was fearful. And then that, that fear kind of switched over. Everybody kind of started going, okay, we can get through this. And some hopes are coming out of it. And then like this, this, like this, another spirit, I think, or, or spiritual attack of anger of this rage mm-hmm. started coming out. And it was like, it was really weird. And, I, and, I, and how I was kind of feeling it, not because I was watching stuff, but I was feeling it. I was like, been yeah. like very fearful of stuff. And then I was like, man, why am I fearful of this? This is nothing to be afraid of kind of thing. And, yeah. and then started like that started leaving. And then, then I started getting mad, like just angry. And I'm like, what is going on? Like it was literally like something happened. Palpable. Yeah, exactly. You could feel it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, you know, and, and in Thailand, it's pretty, pretty, you know, low key. It's not really, you know, much going on here. Um, but it's you know it's it was you could you could you, you could just feel it you know like a like a spiritual vibe in the air that was just you know it was yeah. very interesting and I, and I was just you could see it happening throughout the world like there's just definitely a spiritual attack that hopefully that, that like I said people who are who have at at least um, you know a a connection a, a initial connection with Christianity. Um, would push them to 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 yeah you know, understand and seek out seek out hope and peace and 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 where that comes from and in Christ you know and so hopefully that's what that that what that's what God is using to kind of wake up the church maybe well initially that's what happened what happened initially was the American church was like just dug their heels in with their faith mm. and now uh, so much of what we're getting from the American church is just facebook battles yeah yeah and, and instead of the gospel and um i'll just say this guys I, I don't know when this is gonna air but um how do i put this let, let me let me take on my teacher role for a moment from back in the day <laughs> stop it <laughs> stop it it's like the, the world needs the gospel yeah that's what the world needs and and you know for for me uh, you know, I'm a student of history. I taught history. Everything that's happening, it's not new. Not any of this is new. This is just the, the latest cycle. You know, could, could, could this potentially be the end? Actually, Jesus told the disciples, hey, guys, when you see all this stuff happening, <laughs> the end's not yet. It, there's more stuff coming. Yeah. So, so I don't know. It could be, or it, we may have longer. But the bottom line is, he gave us a job to do, and yeah. that that job is to make disciples. And you know, we we all we all we like. I mean, I think it's important to to uh, to be aware, and and be like not be blinded to the bull, the bull crappery that comes yeah. out of. Washington and Hollywood and all the other capitals of the world and recognize that there are spiritual forces of darkness that are genuinely working to blind people to the truth. It's happening. It's not a conspiracy. It's happening. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's happening. It's been happening for ever since we've been here. Yeah. I mean, it goes all the way back to the garden as God said. I mean, you know, that's what we've been doing the whole time. But the big response for us, man, is, uh, you know, as us just be the gospel, you know, that's, that's where we ultimately got to land. And, you know, if I could go back, I want to go back to my man, Bill Gates, just a minute. Uh, everybody's talking about like, you know, racial issues in our country right now. Why don't you look up homeboy's record on Africa? Oh man. Okay. Look at homeboy's record on Africa. He's used Africa, the continent of Africa as his Petri dish. Matter of fact, most of the nations of the world have used Africa as a Petri dish and just, you know, their yard to play in since the Berlin conference uh, in the 19th century. Y'all can look the Berlin conference up. Waste your time. (laughs) Bring it over. No, no, I mean, like going back to, to, to Gates for a moment, um, 
you know, I just think it's so, man, I have real, I have friends of mine, like, like I, Kit, Kit's my buddy, man. I, I love Kit, Kit Dale. Great dude. Uh, it's, he's awesome. And everybody else I train jujitsu with there's jujitsu is very interesting. It's like you, you could be any sort of belief system. It doesn't, and, and everybody is just real cool, real cool with each other on the mat. Um, or you have the jujitsu politics, which is also a real thing. Um, but we don't have that. And, um, you know, friends of mine that I'm close with that don't believe in God or, or either, either just don't say they do or whatever. I still, I pray for, if I've met anybody, uh, chances are I've prayed for them in the moment, like without even them knowing. Mm. Um, and man, knowing just, even if, even if like, let's say 50% of what I think I know is actually happening and, and has happened already, man, people, man, people are going to hurt when start, when stuff starts to get opened up. Like we're hurting right now. Everyone's ha- is emotional and, and, and people are starting to become even more emotional because they've realized that their emotion has been used as a weapon against them. Um, and so people are getting becoming more and more upset about that. But Bill Gates, man, this guy, he stepped down as Microsoft CEO, right? In February, I think. Mm. And he appointed a new CEO, the board, the board did. <clears throat> and this chick brought in a Abram, uh, Marina Abramovic. Do you guys know who that is? Mm-mm. I don't, but she has a cool name. And I feel Bro. like she can kill people. She, she sounds like an evil, evil villain. <laughs> I know, <laughs> so, right? Man, right. when people, like, when people, yeah. <laughs> I mean, wow. What Dude, Cold War, uh, like, family did she come from? She she is not a good person. Um, she, I mean, like, do people, like, people, again, we go back to films. The films are designed to desensitize us to actually what occurs. Like, witchcraft mm. is a real thing. Mm. And people don't know. And cannibalism and all this stuff, it's all real. And uh, Marina Abramovic, if people go look her up on Google, the censors, censorship has gotten real heavily or hit real heavy. But if people go to DuckDuckGo and type in Marina Abramovic, she does the spirit cooking thing. Oh, that's the, the, the artist? Yeah, the art, the artist. <laughs> yeah, like, the, oh, that's her. Oh, that's the crazy Pizzagate lady, right? Yes. Yes. And she's deeper, bro. Deeper. She's, she's the deep. CEO she's like, of, of Microsoft now? No, no, no. The CEO of Microsoft, the new CEO, after Bill Gates stepped down, the new CEO brought oh. her in to do an advertisement oh, for their yeah, virtual reality yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it was yeah, up yeah, for yeah. it was up for two days and it got like negative, like it got like two hundred thousand dislikes or something in like two days. Yeah. And pizza people were talking about pizza again, and they took it down. <laughs> but that's like Jay Z's deep into that. Kanye West outed outed Jay Z about it. On, really? Live. Yeah. On Hollywood. The Hollywood Bowl at his concert a couple years ago, 2016, I think. He came out and started talking about the Illuminati and Jay Z, and he's like, "Where you at?" Yeah. But Marina Abramovic is deep into politicians and Hollywood, and she, dude, that is some dark stuff. You can't not look at the photos yeah. and videos and be like, oh yeah, maybe evil doesn't exist in the yeah. world. <laughs> it's like, no. I'm looking at some of her work right now. She mm. makes me very uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. It People is. call it art. People call yeah. it art. It is. It They're is. doing mock it's tortures yeah. of children and adults and even, mm. even more stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's crazy, man. Like th- that's one of the things that, you know, in 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 the in the realm that I kind of work in, um, is to, is to hear people like when the whole Wayfair thing come out, right? Yeah. And everybody freaking you know was it was at the very least from 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 my opinion, um, is very suspicious. At the very least, yeah. it was suspicious. It probably needs some investigating deeper, right? At the very least. Completely true. <laughs> yeah. And people go, and people go, oh, that everybody's conspiracy like. I mean, child sex trafficking is not conspiratorial. There's nothing, there's nothing even yeah. slightly conspiratorial. It happens in the yeah. most odd, weird, crazy ways you can possibly think. And it, it would not surprise me one bit yeah. that somebody has, has just found a way to connect in, got their, their online market to go, hey, go over here, search this, and you'll find the prices and, and how to meet up. That's, that's not... Um, that's not even slightly conspiratorial. It's I mean, just a, happens. a pillow I mean, for $14,000? I mean... Yeah, you're like... It's just the pillow. It seems legit. I mean, you know, yeah. I a chandelier for like eighty thousand. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. it's it's crazy, man. And so, like, um, like I said, I think people because the the conspiracy theory stuff has been made so cartoonish, and there are yeah. some freaking actually loony, just crazy people 
who are sure. freaking schizophrenic who just are just paranoid and you know that that happens and that's there and i've met some of them they're really crazy um yeah <laughs> there's something behind you there's something behind you clint um <laughs> but uh, um but like but if mate been made so cartoonish uh and and people have come out with with wrong facts and those kind of things but it's fine um but there is you know things out there that are the world is evil there is an evil um yeah. uh component that is seeking to destroy humankind and hates you hates me yeah. hates your family hates you know and 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 yeah. wants to see it destroyed because he hates god you know and yeah. and uh, as a christian we can't we, we can we need to be rational and, and and very logical and very fair and objective as much as we can but we also cannot take the the spiritual component out of our belief system because it helps yeah. gives us it gives us a a, a, a worldview and a, a lens to actually see the world through and and um, it, it's yeah it, it's very difficult to try to talk to people who who don't have that worldview but still call themselves Christians uh, and go yeah you don't see the disconnect here you know it's kind of frustrating it, it, yeah I want to read a quote to you guys from the great C S Lewis Let's you may it. have heard this before says there are two equal and opposite errors into which our race can fall about the devils. One is to believe in their existence. The other is to believe and feel an excessive an unhealthy interest in them. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, that's the, the careful, the carefulness we have to have as Christians is not to give so much place to the devil that we're like, because I think people yeah. sometimes they give a lot of place. They give so much place to the devil that, they become enamored with him. Yeah. If Opens I'm, a door. If I'm yeah. completely honest, I'm just going to be completely honest with you. When, when I grew up, I grew up in a Christian home, very strict Baptist home that tried to keep me away from evil so much that I ran as hard as I could to it. Yeah. I mean, by the time I was like, I'd say 14, I'd read the satanic Bible. Mm. I read it. I went and found that jugger and read it. I mean, if you told, I was that like kid, if you told him not to do something, I mean, that was like just throwing gas on if I was going to do it. Yeah. And, you know, we, we delved into a lot of stuff as, as kids. I'm not going to get into, and, and, you know, very unhealthy stuff. And, and thankfully the Lord saved me when I was 16 and, you know, set me on a different course, but there's that we, a lot of times, you know, we, we, we run that risk of uh, opening that door, if you will. I think what he all said that a minute ago. I said that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, 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 the enemy's real, but he's a defeated foe. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll share a little story. I think I just feel like I need to share it. Um, is last year, so I'm not, I'm not for or against marijuana. I mean, if people want to do it, they want to do it. I think that people can worship it, which I see – in California and other places, people actually do treat it like this is the God. <laughs> um, Rastafarians. Rastafari. <laughs> Rasta, Rasta, brother. But so I've had a couple edibles, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just a few, and uh, I'm done. I don't want to mess with it no more. And I'll, I'll tell you why. So we talk about the door, right? Being aware of spiritual mm -hmm. battle, spiritual warfare. And uh, man, I was super oblivious. Um, and I was hanging out with some friends, and I ordered some, a couple, like, uh, a few edibles and I consumed uh, a good chunk. It was, it was like a hundred milligrams or whatever. And I consumed like 40 of it. And that was the first time I'd ever uh, <laughs> taken it that much. And it's the last time I'm ever touching it. Um, and man, let me tell you, dude, like people, my friend, I was with my friends, they're all Christians. They're all Christian. And so, but I was not keenly aware of the hallucinogenic possibility of taking it. Um, cause I had others before and it was just kind of relaxed. I just kind of relaxed and I was chilling and, you know, did, it wasn't a hallucinogenic for me before point is I took it and I'm not going to go into the whole detail of what I saw. Cause it'd take too long to explain it. But I, I had, I was started seizing, uh, I was hallucinating, I was seeing stuff and they didn't see anything. They were fine. I had many things unfold in front of me that made me so much more aware of, we are way more than just flesh and bone. Like there is so much more. And uh, I can't, I can't write it off as just an hallucination. An hallucination. I can't do it because I saw an angel and a demon 
fighting over possession of my body. Mm. And man, let me tell you, dude, that shook me. Just say no, kids. Exactly. Just say no. Just say, yeah. It's not worth it. It's not. It's not. I called my dad. I ended up in the hospital. I had a massive anxiety attack. Mm. Um, but That'll it was. Do it. Huh? That'll do it. It'll yeah. do it, man. That's what I'm saying. Is like, you know, I was completely oblivious to that that even possibly happening mm. at all. I thought I was going to feel relaxed, like I, you know, had a couple of drinks, and because mm. that's what the other, that's what happened before. But this opened up a door. Mm. And the same demon, look, this is what I'm, I'm telling people. Like, I, I believe so much more in angels and demons now than I ever have. Like, I've saw the same demon two times before in my life. And uh, this angel, I mean, it was so beautiful. Like, he was fighting over my body, man. Mm. It was so amazing. And it's also very scary. <laughs> and then the next day or two days after I started coming too, it took a while. I got on YouTube and or I, I had to update on my phone because I get these updates like Lion of Judah mm. uh, from the, the YouTube channel, Lion of Judah. And it sent a, a, an update to like a video update to watch a certain video. And the video is exactly breaking down the fact that we all have an angel guarding us. Mm. Right? Or, or I'm paraphrasing, but yeah. it was, oh man, it was so beautiful, man. So I don't know. I just feel like I had to share that. Yeah. So. Well, that's something that you look at too. Like there's this whole push, um, especially people that like, I love listening to Joe Rogan. I love listening to his podcast. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, it's a lot of interesting stuff, a lot of crazy stuff. I don't agree with 99% yeah. Yeah. of stuff he just talks about, but it's interesting stuff. Um, and one of the things that, that he always talks about is DMT. And yeah. if you look at, at, at how people who have experimented with it and, and done it and those kind of things, it's a, it, it, and even people who are not Christians, like at, or even not even, uh, are atheists, what, uh, you know, start going, there's something else out there. There's something yeah. like this is a gateway to another dimension. And I think yeah. that's, that's what is happening is it's, it's that biochemical connection between the body and the soul. Uh, that is that it's, it's tripping. It, it's it's yeah. like a big word tripping. It's a, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's crossing over that, that barrier, opening up that portal for us to go into that dimension. But as a, as a non-Christian, if you're doing that, you're jumping the fence basically to get yeah. into the, the realm of, of, of uh, demonic and angelic activity. Yeah. You, you don't have any safe. There's no safety. Yeah, you're no, there's no safety. Exactly. Yeah. You're, you're, you're like sitting in a war zone with, with a big red, you know, red bullseye on you. Um, and so, um, it's one of those things where it's, it's interesting how, how that happens and how, how, uh, I mean, the, the Bible warns against it was the, the, it translates as sorcery, but if you look at the Greek, it's pharmakia, it's the use of, of medicines or the use of drugs, hallucinogenic drugs, psychoactive drugs in order to commune with, with the spirits, the spiritual realm, Mm -hmm. which is what's happening with a lot of, a lot of recreational drug use. You're, you're, you're engaging in ritualistic worship basically without even knowing it. Uh, and and so you're opening just yourself say up. no, kids. Yeah. Just say no. Yeah. Just any, say any, no. any Christian out there that's like, yeah. oh, that'd be kind of cool. No. Don't do it. Don't no. do it. Don't do it. You <laughs> do know, not. I think there was, um, but it was a big revelation. Um, I can't remember. I, I'm not, again, I'm not as scholarly as you two gentlemen, but there's some passage in the Bible that Lion of Judah, this video was referencing. I go back and find it, but it was referencing the, like this, this thing that, that God has commanded his angels to literally protect us. Like, yeah. and, and it was just, man, it hit me so hard the next, when I heard that, I'm like, man, that was, that was so beautiful. But again, scary, terrifying. I never, because oh, so well, one, one of my favorite passages in the scripture is uh, where Elisha is with his servant and the battle's taking place. And he's like, his service freaking out. You know, he's like, we're losing, we're losing. We got all those. And Elisha actually prays for his eyes to be open. And he sees the great heavenly host fighting the battle for them. And mm. I mean, that's such a beautiful picture because that's what's happening every day around us. You know, the spiritual realm is more real even than the physical realm. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is, this realm is going to pass away. Yeah. And, and that, that realm is not ever going to pass away. Yeah. Um, and that's something that you talked about. Like we all, we always talked about before that, um, and if you thought about as a Christian, you thought about what's the, what's 
what's when you when we die what's going to be like uh when when the new heaven and the earth is created what's that going to be like um and if you if you're and we've always said that it's more like i said it's more real it's more vivid it's more it's more everything uh there than it is here and um and if you if if you if you talk to people who have who have like done these either had a uh out of a near-death experience where they've died and they come been brought back uh or if you know they've done these other things uh to 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 somehow could you know reach that area everybody says the same thing it's more vivid more real more tangible more than anything you could possibly imagine here and so it's 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 very interesting it's, it's almost comforting to go you know there's 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 definitely um it's people have experienced it uh that are christians that have died and come back and said you know I've, what i've experienced over there is is more real than anything have happened mm-hmm. here so you know, if I can can tell you from having been on pastoral staff in the past and present at the death of a lot of people, mm-hmm. um, one particular older lady, just sweet saint, uh, I'll never forget it. I mean, she was like just godly as she could be, man. Um, when she passed, she sat bolt upright in the bed and she said, the grass is so green. Mm. Mm. Those were her last words, dude. And then I get chills just thinking about it. I mean, cause we, I mean, we were all just looking at each other like, Holy smokes. Yeah. You know what we just witnessed the gra- I've never forgotten that, that this elderly lady, I could call her name today. Mm. Um, and she said, the grass is so green. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I was like, what do you do with that? What do you yeah. do with that? What do you do after that, man? It was, <laughs> it was, it was amazing. Somebody it was watered amazing. it, right? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> man, uh, um, what, you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna jump the fence. Speaking of jumping fences, I do want the folks, uh, John, go ahead, you buddy. Was, what, and, and then after that, I, I want to make sure that we talk about this roll of thumb. That's yeah. where I was going with it. I was going with it. I was going with the roll of thumb, man. That was well, it. after you, good sir. Well, no, I'll see after, you. after you, after you. So I'll what, see your roll of phone, and I, oh, I raise you one roll of phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Clinton here, I just did a, uh, like I said, the roll of thumb. Broke to see the how world record. Broke the world record of how many rolls. Uh, could be done in 24 hours. We're not talking hours. about brown and serve yeah. or dinner rolls. No, 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 roll. <laughs> For the non jujitsu, the non JJ people, that means <laughs> getting in there and fighting, uh, fighting without punching and kicking people in the face and biting. But it's just yes. fighting on the ground. No groin shots. Up. Yeah. No fish hooks. Yeah. That's, yeah. And, you know, it, it's, it's, and did that for 24 hours straight. And so, um, how many rolls did you guys end up getting in? And, and tell us about what the process was that. Yeah, so um, so it's really refreshing. We t- we talk about trying to link up, especially in Los Angeles, to meet people that are Christian, mm. um, and not just like ca- like, for lack of a better term, casual, but yeah, yeah. like want to purposefully serve the kingdom of God. And I got a buddy of mine, Chase. Uh, he owns a production company, and he's been doing pretty well for himself for some years. And him and I started talking about what it'd be like to to set a world record, you mm. know. And uh, my mom, she passed away when I was young from cancer. Mm. So I was thinking, you know, how cool would that be to to do this on December 17th, the day she passed, mm. to set a world record. But we were like only two months ahead of it, you know. Yeah. And uh, it was coming up pretty quick. So uh, it took a, a lot of, it was a kind of stressful <laughs> um, to set up, you know, kind of stressful. But we did it. And uh and uh, day came and we, everything kind of, there's a lot of the things that were really choppy. Like we had certain people that were supposed to come in for four hours. We had six, four hour blocks and we're trying to fill eight people per block. Um, and that did not go the way it, we planned it, but it worked out because there are people that showed up that weren't even, didn't even know about it. And they just wanted to be a part of it because they wanted to help. Um, That's cool. And then, yeah, we had the camera, the, the recording stopped, but it didn't, hinder it was like 13 seconds to stop so a lot of little things happened mm. that could have been big problems yeah. <laughs> um but it all was fairly smooth um so 220 i believe was the official record by a buddy of mine he's a former former british uh special forces i believe um mm. but he lives in new zealand i think 
I saw, I looked it up and I saw that, that, you know, who he was and mm-hmm. his name's Obi. He goes by Obi, uh, Damien, <laughs> Damien Todd. I think his last name is Todd. Uh, really good dude. Uh, I reached out to him and I'm like, Hey man, can I just like get some pointers to beat your record? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, he did his all in a gi. I did all oh. in no gi, oh, okay. but he had 220 rolls. Uh, so, and they, he said, I asked for the, the strategy, like how many mm-hmm. minutes they did on and off. And yeah. They came, they had a strategy and it just kind of got thrown to the wayside. Yeah. But, um, you know, he had the official record. He still does technically like, official by world, by Guinness. I'm still waiting on Guinness to, to be like, Oh, but they're so slow and they have nothing yeah. for jujitsu and Guinness. Um, so I reached out to him. We talked and I came up with the strategy. I would do three minutes on for one round and two minutes off for recovery. Mm-hmm. That was the plan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, that was the plan. The goal was to just beat his record yeah. uh, by, you know, by 20. I was going to yeah. shoot for um, for 240, I think, was the original aim. Yeah. And, uh, man, it was, it was probably the most taxing thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah. It was, man, I'll tell you. So I, I broke it down, and the goal was to, to kind of keep chunking, right, to keep yeah. creating chunks of things. Yeah. So to look at 24 hours and to break it down into, like, 10 rolls at a time, Mm-hmm. And then 20 rolls at a time in my head so I could feel yeah. good, feel yeah. good about it. And, uh, sorry, I my laptop. Uh, and so, uh, there was moments where I felt like I was solid. So I just did back to back rolls yeah. just to keep going. And then it happened in like stages, like there were stages of exhaustion, um, and then stages of nerve pain. So I caught, mm-hmm. and some people probably know what muscle rhabdomyolysis is. I'm probably mm. saying a little wrong, but it's muscle rhabdo. So it's when uh, it's usually based on a specific muscle group uh, breaking down beyond repair or, mm. you know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing and creating toxins in the body, which can actually lead to kidney and or liver failure, I believe. Wow. And uh, I didn't know I had it, but I caught it uh, after, you know, many, many hours. Mm. And I also caught, I believe, the coronavirus. Mm-hmm from one of my buddies who was there. Yeah. So I had both of those things happening. And after about eight hours, anytime someone would, maybe six or seven hours, anytime someone would touch anything, mm-hmm. my hand, my forearm, yeah. my chest, anytime I laid back on my back, it was like a wave of nerve pain across my whole body. Wow. And it got to a point where hour after hour, I was almost like, I was becoming more and more emotional from mm-hmm. the pain and then it faded away. And it was like, yeah. not a big deal. Um, I remember getting emotional three times specifically. The first one was because I was tired. I was just tired. It was like eight or nine hours in, 10 hours in, I'm just tired. And then the second time was, (laughs) was, yeah, (laughs) I was just emotional, man. I was like, just, they just starting to feel a little beat. And, uh, but I was high, man. I was high on life. I was high on my friends that were there to support me. I was thinking about my mom. I was thinking about people living vicariously through the moment. We were streaming live, so I was thinking about the people that donated. We raised over four thousand um, dollars, awesome. and that went, yeah, yeah, it went to Medgift, and uh, Medgift is a is a nonprofit developed uh, to help families that are seeking financial aid, like help for for medical bills or just emotional support. Awesome. Um, families that are battling cancer that are looking for help, and um, it was founded by uh, D M Brown, who uh, she passed away from cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, I knew, I, I know her sister. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, we donated just over $4,000 and, um, but going back to the point, I, I, I was starting uh, about eight hours in, I felt emotional cause I was tired mm-hmm. and, uh, and then knowing all of that kind of helped so much. And, uh, and then about late at night, it's so like 14, 15 hours in 16 hours in, I saw some of my strong male buddies, my alpha buddies that were also getting emotional mm. <laughs> and i was like no stop it dude. Come on. <laughs> like i saw my buddy mike um uh he he came in he just watched for like two hours and then he's like he had to go and he like teared up and i'm like dude stop it go away dude, just go <laughs> just go <laughs> uh, and then the third time the third time um which was uh the very end they all bum rushed me all like eight people bum rushed me for the last <laughs> and uh that i was like oh finally it was over and i started like almost <laughs> crying because i was so happy it was over <laughs> Heck yeah, man, that's awesome but yeah man it was 
What a so how many did you end up with? How many actual in the end of it? How many rolls you get? Yeah, 244. Man, that's freaking awesome. 244 rolls in 24 yeah. hours. I bet yeah. you slept for about 17 days afterwards. <laughs> well, <laughs> I can't even imagine. It was bad, man. It was, it was, man, this is what, this is another thing that I, it, it builds my, my belief and strength in God, you know, cause mm. that was way more than just me. <laughs> yeah. That was way more than just having people for support. That yeah. was way more than my emotional connection to my mom dying. Mm. Uh, it, it was so much more. I prayed, I prayed a lot before it happened. Mm. And then part of what we talked about earlier, me having the out of body astral fight with mm. spiritual warfare. Um, God, I think good, man, people can take this or leave it. I heard a voice in a weird way telling me not to worry about this event. Cause I was stressing out mm. about this event and I had clear affirmation that I would not get hurt, mm. um, that I would be protected and that, you know, the world record would happen and it, everything was going to be fine. Mm. And so going into the event i still had that in my mind in my heart and uh it was it was interesting man like i built in every hour to take a 10 minute or every hour every two hours to take a 10 minute break i think i couldn't do it i just kept mm. going wow. um my chiropractor came three times to help me uh my physical therapist came once my acupuncturist came once um i had uh, a couple times where i was trying to eat on the fly <laughs> and I bathroom three times took a shower once and that's it i passed out on the couch for like 24 minutes yeah 24 minutes i passed out on the couch at like 6 a.m yeah and um it, oh, man it definitely felt god ordained you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is crazy to think yeah. About. Yeah, well man. like is, is so is is the is the is the film up anywhere or is the is the can you find it anywhere online if you want to yeah. watch that? And, and see, yeah, I'm sure you still take donations to the, to the, to yeah. the organization uh, for it. Um, Absolutely. Where do people find that out at man? Yeah. So if people still want to donate, they got to go to medgift.org uh, um, or they can message me. I'll send the link directly to them. Um, if people want to watch the footage uh, and you can even find the, the, the link is set up on this page too. It's tag T A G uh, tag dot expert forward slash rollathon. So that's that's the link. And then you can scroll down all the way to the bottom. There's a bunch of photos, really cool, really cool creative photos that were taken. And then there's two videos at the very bottom. And the left hand side is the one that got spliced at the front end. It's about an hour and a half. And then the right hand side you'll see um well the right. <laughs> uh you'll see <laughs> you'll see the um 22 and a half hours. Uh, cause it got spliced cause the recording stopped, but I'm actually editing and doing voiceover for all of it right now. Cool. It took a lot of effort, man. It took so, it took like three months to figure out how to actually start editing and doing voiceover work for these roles. Yeah. And so on my actual YouTube channel, if you just type in Clinton Harris, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belt on YouTube, um, I have, uh, I think about 22 videos I've put up and this is just a recent thing. Um, but I'm, my goal is to upload all of them and do voiceover work on all of them or commentary work and then to pick and choose uh, and create like a montage of my favorite moments, like, like real good. Cause the, at the beginning I was finding my pace. Yeah. I was, it was, it looks really lazy, <laughs> um, but I was finding my pace. So people yeah. watch it. They'll be like, man, he's just laying there. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just me on any given day. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> As this fat guy rolls. He's like, all right, let's move. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. It was it was uh it was interesting. You know, and the, the thing about tying into my like I just I want I want to say I want to do something and then like God give me the courage to do it. God give me the strength to do it. So like that was huge for me and uh and now I want to be really big into fighting sex trafficking. I had an idea of how bad it was, mm. but after going deep into a lot of things, I'm like, man, this is, this is so bad. Like, and so, so many people have no clue, zero clue that, that it happens. And what I was thinking, and this is an idea, if you guys, you know, we could venture into this is what I want to do is I want to hike on foot from the Canadian uh, border straight down to the Mexican border, uh, West coast, and then go across hike straight across to Florida and then straight all the way up to the Canadian border again. 
Wow. And I want to film it all, document it all, go live whenever it's possible. Um, obviously, you just acquired. have to promise to not shave your beard at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll grow it the whole time. I mean, because I'm thinking like, I'm thinking honestly, I, can, I could do it in like two months. I mm -hmm. really think that if I just buckle in and I eat properly and stretch and uh, use, you know, ice and stuff. And my, it's a big vision. It's a very big yeah. vision. But I want to I want to raise like. I believe in big thought, right? I, I want to raise millions of dollars mm. to fight this. I really awesome. do. And I'm willing to sacrifice my feet and my ankles <laughs> and my knees. <laughs> All right, this, this is interesting because, and, and John, I hope you don't mind me. Is it okay if I share this or we can edit it out if you don't? That's, um, we'll, we'll figure it out in a while. Go ahead, man. Um, God has been talking to, for, for people who don't know John, lives in thailand yeah. not just for the good food uh <laughs> he and his family are on the front lines of fighting sex trafficking and one of the things that god's laid on his heart is uh, a safe village and and god's been kind of showing him you know potentially some land and things like that for a while i don't know john maybe we could you know talk about how to connect raising money for that land for that safe village yeah. with, with this particular project just something to pray about something to think about I don't know. man i'm open to whatever god wants i'm i'm good with whatever either way so yeah that's beautiful yeah 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 yeah, bro. yeah. yeah well, man um, I, like, we, ahead, like, let us know when that stuff, that stuff starts, starts happening, man. And we'd, we'd love to promote it and throw it out there, man. And anything we, anything yeah. we do to help, brother, that'd be great. And uh, uh, where, where uh, on a hiking, I'll just give you uh, my, my little bit of knowledge of, uh, of hiking. I ended up, have, I hiked, what, ended up, ended up in total like 64 miles in two days yeah. or something like that. That does this Marine Corps boot camp stuff. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Socks and Rah. mole skin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Socks and mole skin on your feet. We're gonna save your life because, um, man, I've never felt pain um, mm. like I felt pain. Foot foot pain is like it's horrible, different. man. It is. I actually, I actually, but to piggyback on what you just said, because I, yeah. I totally forgot I did this. So the year before, so so December last year, yeah. I did the twenty four hour rollathon, yeah. and then uh november october i think or september i don't i can't remember it's a blur the year before that i did a 24-hour ruck on a freaking track <laughs> on a track in, in kansas yeah oh, wow. man. and and uh, i pulled it, i think it was 54.1 miles oh man and i changed my socks changed my socks i brought yeah. four pairs of socks i brought branch chain amino acids i yeah. brought uh, a, a variety of different supplements i was fine there yeah the, two, the things that struggled was my sack because I, I had a 35 pounds i started with 35 yeah. pounds i brought yeah. food with me so it turned into 25 pounds yeah and i was wearing boots the whole time <laughs> and i'm just i'm just going man and it was so i, I did 22 hours with it was me and like f four or five other people then we hit 22 and they broke uh to give like these because it was to raise awareness for veteran suicide yeah and they handed out all these i have a friend involved in that yeah, it's 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 another thing too, and that's a whole nother world when yeah. you talk about. I think that I can, someone can you know let us know if this is right or not, and if you know uh, uh, John, let me know. But I think it's like eighty percent of the suicides that are committed by veterans every day are not even they're not even combat. Those those people have not even combat uh, mm. oriented. Yeah. It's just X amount of factors. So it's very interesting. But yeah. but uh, I changed my socks a bunch of times, and and my feet, dude, my feet. They, I had no blisters, none. Really? Wow. But my feet were so messed up in my, yeah. hi my hips and my shoulders, mm. but my feet specifically hurt for like four days. Yeah. I was like doing this, these like, this is my feet. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I couldn't go. I'm like grabbing on the wall, trying to walk. <laughs> it sucks. So, so, so if we were going to review all the takeaways from this episode, the devil's a liar. Just say no. And change your socks. And change your socks. <laughs> As precisely in that order specifically. <laughs> but there's a um, there's an organization talking about the, the the veteran suicide. There's an organization um, called Mighty Oaks. The Mighty Oaks made by um, uh, Chad Kobach. Rock Rock I remember the name. But anyways, the Mighty Oaks program and it does work. It's a Christian based organization that deals with uh, 
veterans coming out with PTSD and, and, um, and dealing with uh, veteran suicide and stuff and through, through, uh, through Christ. And so, yeah. uh, if you just want to plug them as well, um, uh, I've just yeah. found out about them recently, uh, through a mutual friend. And so we're, uh, I mean, it seems like a really good thing. And so That's maybe awesome, going to get the next year. So, um, yeah. yeah, brother, man, dude, we've just had a blast with you, man. Uh, thanks for coming on, brother. My pleasure. Um, I'm so grateful for you guys. Seriously. We, we didn't really get to talk about that a lot. We'll have to talk about it another time. Or another we didn't talk about Hillary Clinton either. I mean, I on. know, <laughs> man, the whole point. I right, just say it, just say it. Hillary Clinton killed a lot of people. Just go ahead and say that Clinton will be done. Yes. Oh man. Go look up the Clinton body count, dude. 40 plus there, there, there are over 40, I think 46 bodyguards that have mysteriously died that were connected to her. Jeez Louise. Yeah. That's not cool. Um, that's, that's a whole nother <laughs> level right well, there. Her, so, her and so her husband. Kids, yeah. So kids, to review. There we go. The devil's a liar. <laughs> okay. Just say no. Change your socks. And the Clinton. Epstein kill himself. Yes, and Epstein probably didn't kill himself. <laughs> we mean definitely didn't kill himself. Did uh, not. Yes, did not. Did not. Guys, uh, thanks for hanging out with us. I uh, hope you enjoyed our time together with our buddy Clinton Harris. And uh, we will see you again soon on the Guy Stuff Podcast. Uh, talk to you guys later. Peace. Thank you.